Hello. So this is a developer's tools uh, session with uh, Anton, me, and sure, Devjan. And we have a bunch of folks here discussing uh, different tools and how they are used. And uh, we continue. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Actually, I think it's time to switch okay. from this introduction and uh, see what we can do to improve IDs. Sure. Right. So um, this is, it's not completely clear how these two topics fit into each other. Well, I, I try to make it smooth that like to, to lead to the point where you want to extend the ID right. or the source, right. right? So so what we what we want to do is, you know, we have our own tools and technologies and we have all these different kinds of IDEs and um, they're basically all pluggable in some way or another. So what we want to do now is um, give you an example of how you would um, integrate your tools and technologies into NetBeans. And the process is more or less similar um, in all IDEs, but um, not similar enough, which is why it would be nice if there was a JSR or some, some kind of high-level commonality that we could all share, but we can also talk about that. But um, I want to give you a really... Uh, sorry. sorry, I think there is one JSR for IDE commonalities, and only J developer yeah. even it, yeah. so nobody yeah. cares about yeah. it. Yeah, that's the <laughs> nice thing about standards. Uh, people who are most interested in it promote it and, and in the end follow it. Anyway, so um, I want to give a, a, a brief practical overview of how you would integrate a tool into NetBeans. Um, so what you really need to know um, are a couple of things before we look at anything else. Well, there's a couple of terms. So there's module and there is the term... Um, uh, well, let's say layer XML and a couple of other terms, um, top component and action and node. So these are the basic terms that I just want to quickly look at. So <coughs> if you look at NetBeans or any other IDE or any other uh, uh, GUI tool on the desktop, you have a menu bar and you have a toolbar and you have um, different windows, like this window and this window and this window and this window. So typically, what you want to do if you want to integrate your tool into uh, an IDE like that means, what you want to do is you want to create an entry point for your functionality. So let's say you have some kind of monitoring tool that you want to integrate, or you have a game you want to integrate. example that says um, my game, whatever it is, or my monitoring tool or whatever. Or you have a toolbar button that the user clicks and then whatever it just starts up. And whatever it is typically um, is a window. Um, so it's this is a swing based uh, uh, IDE uh, like IntelliJ. So that's definitely one commonality. So which is nice because um, I was recently looking at how to um, use the darker look and feel from IntelliJ in NetBeans, which is completely possible. You just put all the all the jars, all the Docker jars on the class path of NetBeans, and then um, put the look and feel switch from Docker on the command line, and then NetBeans looks more or less like uh, IntelliJ does, except that there are a number of custom components in NetBeans which need to be configured to, to match that. But to some And whatever the tool is that's opened, and to um, to make it fit into the IDE, you typically want them to open whatever it is as another window inside the IDE, rather than as a separate JFrame that pops up separately from it. Uh, typically, when you are um, creating a plugin for NetBeans or for whatever, you already have the the, the it's, it's both ways are possible, but normally you already have a a, a jar that has the tool that you've already created separately, and now you want to integrate. So what you could do is you could um, uh, include the jar and call the JFrame from your menu item. So you just create a, a, an action, and in the, in the action performed, you, you, you just open the JFrame, and the JFrame could open. But then it would be completely separate from, from the, the IDE itself. It wouldn't be an idiomatic plugin. So what you want to do whenever you're creating a plugin for whatever it is, you want your, um, your plugin 
to blend completely with the with where, wherever you're plugging it into. So if that's what you want to do, um, you would create a new window, um, like any of these windows are, um, and inside of that you would just put uh, and this, these windows are top components. So what you see here, this term is a Java class from the NetBeans APIs um, that is similar to a JPanel, except that it plugs into the NetBeans uh, window system. So you would create a top component, um, and you would need to register that top component um, inside this layer XML file. Um, so you would have a plain Java class that extends top component, and you would want to register it inside this layer XML file, one of which each module has. And um, typically, we kind of uh, mix up the terms module and plugin uh, as the same thing. But um, but a plugin could be seen as as one or more different modules that provides a particular feature into the application. Um, so each module contains one jar file, which is the jar file of the functionality that you're providing, plus a layer.xml file where you register your contributions into the, um, into the IDE as a whole. So there is um, a, a strict folder structure in there that we can take a look at, um, so you see what I mean. Um, so I'll create a new NetBeans module. So let's say, so what shall we? Jay Creed. Jay Hello, J. Let's say hello, Jay Creed. Very simple starting point. Hello, Jay Creed plugin. So, what is the uh, Creed? Um, uh, not com. But okay, it's a com. Dot. So the, the code name base is the unique identifier of the module. So if I were in Germany, I would put de dot something. It's basically the the URL of the website associated with the, the feature reversed. GR. GR. Right, okay. So gr. Dot, um, uh, jcreach. Dot hello is maybe a sensible name. So this would be the unique ID of this particular module. Um, and so to finish. And what we have here is an ant-based NetBeans module, but there's also a Maven archetype for it. So you could use, you could actually create a NetBeans module in a different IDE. Uh, so, so there's actually a Maven, Maven archetype that you could use for that, or on the command line. So just uh, use a different. Uh, so it means you could create a plugin for IntelliJ and for NetBeans at the same time in the same IDE, which could be. Uh, so here is the here's the module, and right now it contains nothing. Um, except a whole bunch of configuration files, so end based and this one. Um, but what's important is that at some point we'll have something called this layer file. So there is a module development category. So this is really useful to be, to develop a plugin for NetBeans inside NetBeans um, because there are all these templates for getting started. So if you want to have a new window, here's a template for that. If you want to have a new action, which um, is um, visualized as a button or as a menu item, then you would use this uh, template. So there's all kinds of different templates to, that give you basic skeleton class for whatever API you want to implement. And there's a tutorial that relates to each of these uh, templates. Uh, sorry, and just to follow up on the previous thing, this is exactly the, the, the kind of integration that I would like to have with LazyBones and NetBeans. So mm. We provide this kind of wizard when right. you know what are the available LazyBones right. templates right. Uh, on the other side of yeah. Follow, follow through the different variables and settings yeah. that are taken yeah. So actually, it's it's interesting because there is a wizard for that. So this this is a wizard for creating a wizard. So this uses uh, this template uses the wizard API, and at the end of it, you have an implement uh, a simple implementation of the wizard API, which then you would populate with uh, with lazy bone stuff, and you would um, register that inside here. So this is actually a wizard wizard. It's kind of, kind of um, so here's also Java help, for example, you want to clean Java help, but one of the things in here is XML layer file. So I want to show you this. Um, so um, this, the, the tooling in NetBeams lets you expand this XML layer file. And this I wanted to do to show you that all the contributions that you make to NetBeams IDE fit into a folder inside of this XML structure. So each module can have one of these layer XML files. And it, it starts with this file system tag. And um, anything you want to provide. So if you want to have a new menu item, you need to make sure that it's registered in this menu bar folder. You know, you can see here, there's a folder for file. There's a folder for edit. So um, what happens at the startup of NetBeans IDE is that 
the core uh, modules in NetMins IDE, look inside the menu bar folder and see, okay, ah, there's all these folders, uh, there are subfolders. Let's create a menu for each of those folders. So, so these folders are created automatically at startup. And then um, that same core functionality looks inside of that and sees, hey, here's all these other entries. We will make a menu item for each of these. And similarly, there's a toolbars folder. So at startup, <coughs> the same core functionality um, creates at startup the toolbar from these uh, folders in the toolbars folder. So um, that means that um, you can actually reuse this functionality. You can create your own NetBeans platform application on top of this functionality, which means you wouldn't have to create your own menu bar or your own toolbar. You would reuse the menu bar and toolbar, and you would register your action listeners inside of this structure. And um, so it, it makes it really flexible. And it means that you, as a user of the same uh, platform, um, don't have to um, care about um, basic infrastructure of any application, like the menu bar, the toolbar, the window system. They're all there. It's your role is to plug in the pieces that are unique to your uh, application. But okay, so there's these folders. There's also a folder called Windows System. Um, so here, this is Windows 2. And in here, there are subfolders. And here are all the top components are registered. And um, you can also have, so there's something called modes. So you can see here that these tabs, these, so there are four windows here next to each other. Now they belong to the same mode. So when I right click to the right of it and I say float group, they all act together as a single group. So this is called the explorer mode. And this here is called the editor mode. And right now there are um, two documents in the editor mode. And down here is the output mode. And there is an output window in the output mode. So this, this different. So you can imagine there's a, this, it's a JFrame. And um, it's been divided into different areas into which you can put uh, different windows. And when there are multiple windows in the same area, automatically you get tabs. So, so what you might think is, OK, so now you know, if you want to create a new menu item, new tour button, new window, we have to create this Java class. Um, and then we have to go into this painful XML file and register it and make typos, and things get all screwed up. That's how it used to be, and that's um, uh, definitely the worst thing about XML. Um, but um, what happens now is um, that this, these XML entries are generated um, from annotations. So I'll, I'll create a hello jcrete uh, menu item. So I'll create a new um, action. And you can see that an action can either be always enabled or conditionally enabled. So always enabled is an action like exit. You should always let the user exit. Um, but some are conditionally enabled. So you can see that right now, if I look at file and save, this is now grayed out because there's no change here. But when I make a change here, when I go back to file, now this one is highlighted. So there's a, a concept of, uh, of context. So when a change is made, you can publish an object, which is done automatically in the case of documents, and into a into a global uh, lookup, into a, into a global registry, and basically a publish subscribe mechanism and observer pattern implementation. You can publish an object into this global uh, location, and other parts of your application can listen to that global uh, location for objects of interest. So um, so that's how this um, this the save action works. It's listening for an implementation of an of an of an interface called Safe uh, Cookie in this case, Safe Cookie. Uh, cookie um, for obscure reasons um, that have more to do with the lack of English of the uh, of the API architect than of any uh, logical thing. Uh, it was before the time of, of uh, web cookies, and I asked the API architect, "Why are these interfaces called Safe Cookie, Edit Cookie?" You know, and he said, "Well, a cookie is something nice that you get." And so, but you can imagine that um, being applicable in a way because when you make a change in a document, the document gives um, this cookie of "Hey, this is saveable" <laughs> to the to the global uh, context, and then the save action is listening to the global context and picks up its cookie, and whatever is defined in the interface, uh, in the implementation of the interface, is performed. So the so the save action never knows what happens when the user clicks on it. It just knows there's an object available, it has a method save, and when, it, when the implementation is available, um, just perform whatever is defined in the save uh, method. So, 
So when you create a new action, um, to get back to where we were, um, you can choose whether the action you want to create is always enabled or conditionally enabled. And um, so first we'll create an always enabled one, just to show how simple this is. So we put it into a particular category, we put it tools, and we say where should this be uh, registered in the menu bar or in the toolbar or wherever. So um, it's going to be a greeting, so we can kind of imagine this may be a kind of, kind of very simple tool, so we'll put it here. Um, so we say next, um, so hello jQuery action. Hello jQuery. And display name, hello jQuery. Okay. So now is it finish? And what we have here, um, amazingly, is a pure Java action listener. This is not a special NetBeans action class. This is a plain standard normal action listener. But it's been annotated. And you can see these, these annotations here. Now these annotations, first of all, this one says that the path where um, this action listener should be registered is mainly tools. So let's um, compile the module. Basically it just specifies all the entries that you will write in XML. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, the, the cool thing is you don't have to do it in XML, you can do it directly in the Java code. Um, but so I'll switch now to uh, another place where this generated file is found. So here's the generated file. And here you can see menu tools. Okay? So this means that um, when the module is added, uh, when it's installed, or when the uh, IDE starts up, um, this will be added to the, to the menu folder inside the registry within the tools folder in there. So automatically it will be added to the tools menu. So, um, so let's go back, and I'll change this here. So I decide, no, I don't want this to be in, in menu tools after all. I want it to be in menu file. Okay. And now we go back here, we see menu file. So let's say we don't want this, we want to have a special menu in NetBeans, which will contain all our greetings. So hello jQuery, hello Java 1, hello whatever. So we put in here, hello greeting. Greetings. Okay. So now we build this again. So now this uh, will create in the menu folder a new subfolder called greetings. And so when the IDE starts up, or when the module is installed, um, a new menu will be created called greetings. So so you don't actually need to say you know J menu because new J menu add J menu to a, a menu bar. You just say here's a new folder that's in that structure and it will cause a new menu to be created. So, um, so that's one thing that we get from here. Um, so, uh, this is this is the one annotation. So the other annotation is the display name, and it's got this uh, uh, hash uh, reference. In, yeah, in front of it, and it's a it's a reference to here, which um, normally, if you if you have um, strings in your application, you want to have some kind of properties file that contains all the strings, which you can give to a translator. So normally you have to not only switch from a Java class to an XML file, but also to a properties file. In this case, again, you are working directly in the Java class because the properties file is generated at compile time. And that's where this key will be found. And this is the value. And here there's a reference to that, to that uh, key. Um, and finally, here's the unique ID and here's the category. And the category is also interesting because in the options window there are there's a key map section where all the actions are found. And you can see here there are different categories. So once this module is installed, the jQuery hello jQuery action will be registered in the tools menu. So if I type tools here, I'll be able to I'm not shortcuts, but the tools here. Yeah, there's tools. Okay, well, category. So here's the category. So the search isn't on the category. But, um, so here I would find it in this tools list. Uh, sub list here. <coughs> you just find it out. Um, well, well, I well, actually yeah, missing missing feature. Yeah, missing feature. It would be nice to to uh, <laughs> to filter on the on the uh, on the category. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or another thing, just for yeah. test search. Well, actually, actually, it's, it's it's actually, if you start typing here, you should. No. Yeah. Okay, well, 
Who's seen any house ones here? Okay. So, um, so there's that. So, so this is a, an action that will always be enabled. And whatever we type in here, so we could have a plain, uh, some plain Java swing, whatever here, or we could have a Java FX panel that opens, or you what, know. Um, so here's the message. Um, okay. So let's install this, and we should expect this to be in a new folder called menu greeting. So I'll put it into new tools. Uh, you can install it directly into this in, uh, development environment where we're correcting the, the module. So you don't have to start the same you start, It's possible to, to it's, it's more likely that you would run this, which means a, a second instance of the IDE starts up and this module is installed in that second instance. But it's um, interesting that we can install it directly into the same uh, development environment. It's obviously when you're making a very complex module with errors or whatever, you don't want to install it into your development environment because then you're destroying the environment that you're working in, etc. But for something simple, so here's the hello jQuery. So but the cool thing is that to make a, um, a an always enabled action conditionally enabled. So if, if I go through this action with it again and I say it's conditionally enabled um, if some object exists. So we'll, we'll say that there is some object called greeting. That needs to exist. So uh, again, we put the tools, and we put it somewhere. Some other action. Now the only difference between the previous one and this one is that in the constructor we have this object called greeting. And how does it check for condition? Sure. So. Um, so this particular menu item would only be enabled if a greeting object is available in the context. And uh, the context is? In the context would depend. So let's say I have this, um, so these are nodes. So though in the beginning I mentioned there were a couple of terms. Um, I guess I've lost that file somewhere. Uh, okay. So top component was the one term, action is the other one. So we just looked at action, so node is, is the other term. When I select uh, so these are all called nodes. This is a node, this is a node, this is a node. All these files um, uh, and folders are called nodes. Each of these nodes have their own context. So um, if you know, I could make a node that um, when you selected it, publishes an underlying object, which actually happens um, here as well. So when you um, select a, um, so you can see this actually in the navigator. If you look in the <coughs> navigator, okay, navigator. So if I select an XML file, I see here in the navigator XML content. If I select the Java class, I see here Java content. So what this navigator is doing, it's listening to whatever is selected. So here the XML is selected. Here the Java uh, class is selected. So it listens to what is currently selected, and what is currently selected publishes an object. So here an, an XML is published containing its XML content. Here a Java object is published, which contains its, its Java content. And that is a, you know, that causes the navigator to be updated with whatever is currently selected. Also the properties window. Um, <coughs> so the properties window listens to the current node. So here I have a node, I have a different node here, a different node here, a different node here. So for my for the save action, it listens for save objects. Um, for the greeting action, it could listen for some ob object to publish a greeting object, and if the greeting object is published, um, then the greeting could be performed. Um, yeah, so that's really that's really actions. So um, let's kind of move away from this conditionally enabled stuff because it's. it's a, complicates the Hello jQuery uh, situation a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, since here we don't really have a, a greeting object to deal with, so we just want to greet it, greet, set, set, uh, send a greeting. So we have menu tools. So if we had toolbars tools, we would have a new toolbar button created and uh, in the tools toolbar and we can specify an icon. So you can see here, this is also the cool thing about using annotations versus XML that you can use the code completion to see what um, attributes are available. Um, plus, um, you know, if you make a typo, the compiler will tell you, will, will tell you that you made a typo, which with XML is 
much more problematic. So if I make a typo here, you need to see it as an error. So here's a list of attributes. Uh, one of these is the icon that you can specify. Um, that would be displayed if you were creating a toolbar button. So, um, so the, the, the first very simple example of, you know, if you have your own technology, your own tool that you want to integrate, you could just, um, if you have an action listener, copy it directly into a module like this. You know, just copy and paste your action listener into a module and then put these annotations on top of it. And that's it. Um, and then, then you're done. And then you've created a new menu item which, when invoked, can open your JFrame or the JPanel or whatever that, that contains your monitoring tool or whatever device um, you've got. Um, the, the windows work the same way. So I'll create a new window. Um, I'll put it into the properties um, position. So let's say jQuery window. Now, what you have here is the stock component class I mentioned. So here is a class that extends stock component. Um, it's basically a JPanel with the difference that it's got all of these annotations again. And these annotations, first of all, specify where this um, window is going to appear, in which position. So it's going to appear in the, um, in the properties mode, in the properties position. And it will open that startup automatically. And it will, it will also have an action because the assumption is, in most cases, if you create a window, you want to let the user open it if they've closed it. So automatically an action will be created for opening this window. So you don't need to create a separate menu item for opening the window, it's already created. And again, there are messages. So these are put into the bundle properties file. It's, uh, you know, all the classes have the same kind of uh, uh, procedure. It's a plain Java class. And there are annotations that at compile time generate, uh, or annotation processor at compile time uses the annotations to generate the XML entries. So if we install this module now, a second time, and window jQuery. Yeah, so this is the problem of installing it directly into the <coughs> It's not always going to work. Uh, there's mm. some uh, new point of that. Oh, that was an error. Oh, it, uh, other exceptions. Oh, okay, yeah, so some parts of the, of the IDE are initialized at startup, so you can't just reinstall um, the way I've been doing. So let me start up the IDE again. It's pretty fast, and here's that window. So here's some. So you know, this is just um, a JPanel. So if you have a monitoring tool, you can you could either in the GUI designer um, put your JPanel, or you know, it's just it's just Java code now. But anything you want to have displayed here, you can uh, just add in this in this code. So the, so the basics of integrating uh, tools and technologies is really simple. You've got these actions, you've got windows, and you've got nodes. And it can become a lot more complicated, um, but <coughs> the basic stuff is really simple. A typical thing that you also want to do is you want to let the user configure something in your plugin. So let's say your plugin has provided, so here you can see also we have this menu greetings with an um, So let's say our plugin has provided this menu item and it's provided this window. So maybe whenever a greeting is done, uh, we want this window to show that, you know, to, to notify or to provide a, a history list of routers. Um, you know, we might want to let the user uh, modify the background of that, of that top component. And you could include directly in the top component a button that says customize. And then a, a, a JFrame pops up and you can customize that uh, top component. But it's better, again, to be idiomatic with the IDE. So rather than creating a, a separate customizer for each feature, um, in, within that feature, it's, it's more likely that you want to integrate it into the options window. So you would create a new tab along the top here. You can see these are <coughs> these are called uh, primary tabs, and they and they provide <coughs> configuration details for the major features um, of the IDE. And there are sub tabs. So you can see these are sub tabs. So 
So you could provide, it would typically provide a sub-tab inside the miscellaneous tab for customizing your jQuery functionality that you've provided with plugin. So for that as well, there's a, a little template that you can just run through. Uh, so we select a template, options panel, and you can specify where it should be. Um, so here's the primary panel, here's the secondary panel, jQuery. Uh, you can provide keywords. And the keywords are useful for people who are new to the IDE or to your own application if they happen to know that this functionality exists. So in the top right, um, let's say you want to find out how does Netbeans support Maven. So I'm typing here Maven. And I can see here there are options panels that make use of Maven and there are help topics that make use that, that you know, describe Maven usage in Netbeans. And here I can type uh, ants and then I can see all the ants. So then I type Gradle and I wouldn't see anything because the Gradle support is a separate plugin that isn't installed. But if it were, it would, I would get information about that. So we need to create a default option. I'm sorry? That should be a default option. For, <laughs> for finding Gradle installed. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, Gradle should be installed by default. I, I agree completely. So if, um, yeah, so, you know, if I have an internet connection, I would see Gradle in this list. You would install Gradle and then you would see Gradle in there. Um, so when you create your options window, um, so, Options panel, uh, you set a title like jQuery, and you would have some keywords in here. So, jQuery would be one of them, and then the other ones. That uh, when the module is installed, when the user types jQuery in here, they will get uh, and, uh, the options panel. So, here you can then add a label for config, you know, um, uh, color maybe. And then you would have some color chooser. Which should be in this list. And there's a bunch of somewhere. Sort this on um, this is this searchable. So I can, uh, can you just start typing and do a search like yeah. IntelliJ? Okay, uh, here. <laughs> uh, I'm typing with nothing. Ah, oh, there, it does work. Yeah. <laughs> New feature. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so then. You can drag the color chooser, oh, no. compute color chooser, forget about that label, something is familiar. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then uh, you install this again. So actually, th so this is the same as the other ones. This again, it's a, in this case, it's not a top component, it's a J it's an options panel. Um, uh, it's an options panel controller, but there's also a plain, if you look at this, this is a plain J panel. And this J panel was returned by this options panel controller, which is registered uh, by this layer, uh, with, by this annotation into the layer file. It, exactly the same as the other things. So there's a folder in the file system for options panels, and this puts, uh, puts it there and returns a J panel, which could contain a JavaFX component or something. And then we'll when we install this. Install this, let's see if we can find it. No, it's gonna have to restart. Here's J Creek. Okay. So yeah, so error message again. So we need to restart this again. So I mean that's basically what I wanted to show. Are there any other questions or how do you do this or that or how? Uh, that's uh, that uh, action can uh, communicate with with that window, with window. It, do you have access to the um, some context or something to that uh, instance of that window? Uh, which action? Uh, you have action greetings. Uh, yeah, and okay. when you click it. Something should should um, I would like to see a label in a label in the jQuery window. Um, so let's. Um, how we do this? Mm. Uh, so well, um, one thing you could do is. 
there is a, a preferences um, uh, extension. So in your preferences for a module, um, put a class in there. Uh, Getcho, can you make context sensitive actions so when the top component is selected, then okay. the let's section is enabled? Okay, and sure. Then you can get the like hookup, that. right? Okay, so let's so so that there's different approaches, and this is this is a problem you're going to have if you use um, I guess any API, but um, there's different approaches for different things. But let's let's imagine that um, whenever the user um, so tell us your oh, when user uh, opens and selects uh, the when the hello jQuery is active panel yeah. window, then uh, action is okay. enabled in okay. the menu. Okay, fine. Okay. Let's do it like that. So um, let's say this is, we have we have an API object called greeting. Okay. So Java class greeting, and um, here. Um, so in our top component, we're going to have um, we're going to put so each, so a top component. So there's a global lookup for the whole application, and there's a lookup for the top components and a lookup for the nodes. The way you access the lookup for the top component is to use a method called associate lookup. So here you can inject objects into the registry of the top component. Okay, so right now it's empty. Um, so let's put in there. Um, a greeting, a greeting, and we pass into there something. Um, let's say uh, where is this top component? Uh, top. Yes, constructor. Uh, you need to put it in a lookup also. Greeting. Lookups dot single or something. Oh uh, yes, yep. So not the object itself, but wrap it in this. Okay. So here we have a new greeting. So uh, here's the greeting. And change style. Um, so name. Return name. In the constructor, okay. so if only Java had properties for <laughs> <laughs> uh, or but you need constructor with the parameter. Um, you need constructor and get it. Projects window is selected and greeting is disabled. Now jQuery window is selected, greeting is enabled, and okay. Yeah, plus what? Yeah. It's fake. You, you can uh, put only class name, not get name. I'm sorry? You put only yeah, the string was the yeah, 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 yeah. the whole functionality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right to string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's how it works. That's how you communicate between the two. They don't communicate directly, they communicate through lookup. 
And and the cool thing is that this action and the top component know nothing about each other. The, the one the one publishes an object, the other one listens for the object. Uh, is there the possibility for different plugins to communicate together? Yeah. Or so so we can have another plugin that also listens for the greeting. Ah. Well, anyone can listen for that greeting object. Ah, so there's no restrictions to you can get the greeting only if you no. are in the same so, or something. No. no. If or, or there is a restriction because um, um, so so it's true. Right now, um, if I create another module, uh, I wouldn't have access to that greeting object. Because by default, everything is, is anything inside of a module is hidden from all other modules. So um, you can. So this is defined in the manifest, and it gets in the manifest via the, the project uh, this project XML file. You can see here there is an entry public packages, and here it says nothing. So there's nothing in this public packages now. So I can do it in different ways, but um, I can right click on this and I can say export package. So export the package. So now this package is public. Now everything inside of this package is accessible to everyone, any other module, any application. So now what I would normally do is, um, this is uh, the cool thing that, so now I say org, uh, uh, what is it, uh, your jQuery uh, impl. So then I hide the impl classes into the separate package. So now I can get to those ones. And this greeting is the only one that anyone should care about. And this, everything else I can put in there uh, so no one can use that code and uh, rely on that code being there and working that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have to restart some sort of it? Uh, Quitting is uh, default. It's default uh, access. You should change the grid in Java and get it, make it a public. Yes, yes. Uh, the string. Mm -hmm. The constructor is not. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so just keeping track of time. Oh. Okay, so I suppose we finished. Um, Don't you love the, uh, the package private visibility accessor in Java? <laughs> yes. It's so beautiful. No, but uh, of course not. <laughs> so, any other questions? Or, Anton, any other thoughts? Well, I'm trying to download the internet with lazy bones now. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's why I don't have. So, I know that. <laughs> so IntelliJ has an integration with Git and GitHub in the way that you can post a code snippet into Git and GitHub. I suppose that uh, NetBeans has the same thing. What I would love to see, because I'm pretty sure that neither plugin has it already, is uh, invoke your build with either with Maven and Gradle with coverage and then publish that to coverall.io. The only thing that you need when you run coverall on your own versus running in a supported CI environment is that you need to supply uh, an access token. So if you could configure that access token in uh, I don't know, Coverall's uh, configuration panel, mm -hmm. and then just run the whole build with coverage and automatically say, publish to Coverall's, that would be awesome. Okay. Hacker, <laughs> hacker, <laughs> Yeah, basic bounce yeah. and Coverall's. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you.